comunicación, por favor, para el último segmento del de evento de hoy, de esta conferencia internacional sobre parques industriales. Agradeciéndoles a todos ustedes, por supuesto, por estar acompañándonos durante toda esta jornada. Realmente es un tema apasionante, donde hay mucho por trabajar y las experiencias de la fuera, de otros territorios, de otros países, muchos de ellos lejanos y otros no tanto, sirven muchísimo para conocer cuál es el norte. Mucho trabajo por delante y, y cuán gran experiencia que nos están brindando todos los colegas y todos los especialistas que nos visitan el día de hoy y el día de mañana también. Los invitamos entonces a tomar ubicación, reiterándoles, por favor, que tengan a bien mantener los teléfonos móviles en modo silencio o vibrador dentro de esta sala y durante las exposiciones. Y les voy a pedir, por favor, para que coloquemos el sistema de preguntas que es slido.com. Ustedes pueden ver en las pantallas de los laterales slido.com, www.slido.com, ingresan desde sus teléfonos celulares y allí colocan la clave CIPI, de ese modo pueden formular la pregunta, pueden ser en idioma castellano o inglés y también pueden colocar like alguna pregunta que les parezca interesante. Nos disculpamos previamente si es que todas no se pueden responder, pero intentaremos cumplir con los tiempos de nuestra agenda. También reiterarles que tenemos una exhibición de parques industriales, está a la izquierda de esta sala, donde ustedes han ingresado, tienen la posibilidad de visitar esta exhibición que va a estar abierta tanto el día de hoy como mañana, así que los invitamos a todos ustedes a visitarla. Y ahora sí vamos a invitar a los miembros del panel, si desean por favor que se acerquen. Mientras ellos se van acomodando también los invitamos a ustedes a tomar ubicación nuevamente, a acompañarnos con un poquito de silencio para conocer quiénes serán los protagonistas de este próximo panel sobre parques ecoindustriales. Nos acompaña el señor Gabriel Quijandría, viceministro de Desarrollo de Recursos Naturales del Ministerio del Ambiente del MINAM, para quien pide un cálido aplauso. También nos acompaña Mr. Martin Peter, director de la Cooperación Económica y Desarrollo de la Secretaría de Estado para Asuntos Económicos Seco de Suiza. Nos acompaña el señor Hans Subpark, profesor del Colegio de Ingeniería de la Universidad de Ulsan de Corea. Mrs. Na Jung Shin, consultora senior de finanzas, competitividad e innovación en práctica global del Grupo Banco Mundial. Y modera el panel Mr. Christian Susan, oficial de desarrollo industrial y coordinador del programa global de parques industriales, parques ecoindustriales del Departamento del Ambiente de ONUDI. Un especialista en el tema, para lo cual dejamos entonces la palabra a Mr. Susan. Muchas gracias. Ladies and gentlemen, It's an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to this conference, the last panel of today. Uh, we've heard it over and over. Without industrialization, there is no economic development. Without industrialization, developing countries will have no chance to move from their status towards high income status. Yet, unless this industrialization is inclusive and sustainable, it bears the risk of imposing serious externalities, negative externalities on the environment and on people. Transferring environmentally sound technologies to the industries, uh, uh, exposing them to resource efficient and cleaner production approaches allows to reduce these externalities. Nevertheless, they exist, they continue to exist. Grouping industries in industrial parks allows to achieve economies of scale It is the basis for the promotion of a circular economy and for the establishment of industrial symbiosis processes. Yet to fully minimize 
negative externalities and with heat case studies of positive externalities, it is required that industrial parks are supported in their transition towards eco-industrial parks. In late 2017, the World Bank Group, UNIDO and GIZ, we have come up with a common framework, an international framework on eco-industrial parks. And the commonly agreed definition has been found. Eco-industrial parks are a community of businesses which, is located, which are located together on a common property. The member businesses seek enhanced environmental, economic and social performance through collaboration in managing environmental and resource issues. In today's panel, we are going to hear from our host countries which efforts have been undertaken by Peru to move from industrial parks towards eco-industrial parks or to promote the establishment of new parks, new industrial parks, which can already leapfrog. They don't have to go through the stage of industrial park towards eco-industrial park. They can straight away become an eco-industrial park. We will hear about results achieved, also about the challenges which the country had to face and which support is requested from, the, uh, from development partners in order to further go on this trajectory. We'll hear about one of the global best cases about South Korea South Korea must be considered a country which is the most advanced when it comes to establishing eco-industrial parks, to implement this eco-industrial park concept. And last but not least, we have two representatives from the donor community, from the World Bank Group, and from SECO, the Swiss State Secretary of Economic Affairs, and they're going to share with us why their organizations have embarked on this process and which support they can offer their partner countries. Since we are already a bit behind schedule, I try to be as brief as possible. It's my pleasure to introduce our first panelist, Vice Minister uh, Gabriel Quijandra Acosta. He is Vice Minister of Strategic Development of Natural Resources. Mr. Quijandria has a master's degree in natural resources management of the Inca Business School Alajuela in Costa Rica. He's a recognized expert in environmental matters and in the management of natural resources. He has extensive experience in different institutions promoting the development of the Latin American region. In addition, he has experience in matters of policy and environmental management, financing of sustainable development, conservation of biodiversity, and climate change. In his field of research, he developed studies oriented at design of policies and in training and teaching activities, both at the university level and as a decision maker in the public and private sectors. Since December 2011, Mr. Kihandria, Vice Minister Kihandria, has, is holding the position of Vice Minister of Strategic Development of Natural Resources of the Ministry of Environment of Peru. Vice Minister Kihandria will share with us the history of industrial parks in Peru. He will give us an overview on the status of the transition of industrial parks towards eco-industrial parks in Peru as well as on the process which is going on towards the establishment of new eco-industrial parks. Furthermore, Mr. Kine, Vice Minister Kihandria will elaborate on the barriers that Peru has encountered in this process and how they were overcome. Vice Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Buenas tardes. Muchas gracias por la oportunidad de estar aquí el día de hoy con ustedes. La idea de la presentación es básicamente mostrarles lo que desde el Ministerio del Ambiente se está apostando eh, como nuevo modelo, un nuevo modelo de desarrollo en el cual eh, los parques industriales son entendidos como un motor para generar mejor planificación urbana, para generar una, un impulso hacia el desarrollo sostenible. Y no solamente el desarrollo sostenible entendido desde el punto de vista específicamente industrial, o sea, cómo hacemos la transición hacia la economía circular, cómo ganamos economía de escala por concentrando industrias que están desperdigadas en varios sitios de la ciudad en un solo sitio, sino también viendo cómo hay beneficios que ocurren hacia afuera del parque industrial, o sea, cómo el proceso de establecimiento del parque industrial genera una serie de beneficios adicionales a nivel de la gestión del espacio y cómo hacemos que para superar 
un problema que ha ocurrido en, en, en muchos casos en el país. Son eh, desarrollos de zonas industriales que terminan siendo invadidas o siendo, eh, sí, invadidas en las cercanías por población que está buscando de manera desordenada oportunidades de trabajo, oportunidades de vivienda y que con el tiempo empiezan a quejarse de los efectos ambientales que genera la industria que llegó antes que ellos y que la industria que hizo que ellos se muevan a esta zona. La idea en el caso de, de la apuesta por el Parque Industrial de Ancón, en el marco de esta propuesta de la Ciudad Verde Raimond X, es evitar eso, es lograr cómo desde el principio ordenamos el proceso de ocupación del espacio y en este caso, un, un, como, como se señala ahí, uno de los, de los pocos espacios disponibles que tiene la ciudad para ampliación urbana ordenada. Es más, yo me atrevería a decir el único espacio disponible que queda de escala suficientemente grande como para pensar en un proyecto de ciudad ordenada, de ciudad planificada en el, en el país, que son estas cerca de 8.000 hectáreas y se le suman otras 2.000 que tiene la Municipalidad de Lima también en esta, en esta misma zona, podríamos llegar a 10.000 hectáreas eh, que están en una zona quebrada, como se ve ahí, ahí en el mapa, pero que tiene un potencial para desarrollar ciertas, ciertas condiciones de ciudad sostenible, de ciudad verde, con un eh, core, con, ¿no? con, un, con un centro, con un núcleo eh, fuerte alrededor de un desarrollo de un, de un, de un parque industrial. Y una zona además este, en, en la cual eh, la presión por crecimiento poblacional, la presión por crecimiento eh, de la ciudad es, es grande. Este es un terreno muy apetecido por traficantes de tierras, es, es un terreno que hay que defender y que venimos defendiendo desde el Ministerio del Ambiente con apoyo del Ministerio de la Producción desde el año 2015, desde el Ministerio del Ambiente desde el año 2010, con uñas y dientes, literalmente, porque eh, o sea, el, la, la intención de, de, de invadirlo para, para, para lotizarlo y venderlo de manera desordenada es grande. Entonces, eh, la idea o la apuesta fuerte va por el lado de cómo desarrollamos esto en una lógica integral, en una lógica integral donde, donde el, el parque industrial es el, el gran ancla de desarrollo. Para que se hagan una idea de qué tamaño, de, de qué escala de espacio estamos hablando. Son 8.332 hectáreas que equivalen más o menos a 20 veces el distrito de Barranco o 6 veces todo el distrito de San Borja. ¿no? O sea, ven que es un espacio, de, 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 es un, es un espacio bastante grande, como ven, en, con condiciones bastante complicadas. Ahí el factor, uno de los factores limitantes principales, además de las pendientes, ¿no? es el tema de la disponibilidad de agua. Y ahí podemos ver, cuando vemos la caracterización, qué cosa es lo que es urbanizable en este caso. Alrededor de 1.500, 1.600 hectáreas es lo que está en la zona plana, en la zona baja, ¿no? lo que está pegado a la, a la carretera. Esto está en la, en la zona de entrada a la variante de Ancón, hacia el lado derecho si es que vienen de Lima yendo, yendo hacia Chancay. Lo que, lo que se ve en verde son las zonas más quebradas, las zonas este, más complicadas, que son las que tendrían que tener una utilización para protección, y la zona de amortiguamiento, la zona de transición entre la zona utilizable para este, desarrollo urbano, urbano e industrial, y lo, lo que sería la zona más natural. Y ciertos condicionantes que se ven ahí, ¿no? que son los que determinan el uso el uso ideal del territorio. Estas son algunas de las vistas de lo que podría ser la visión a futuro para el desarrollo de esta zona. ¿Qué es lo que se quiere impulsar? Un modelo nuevo de ciudad. Una ciudad con un concepto de sostenibilidad productivo, diverso e innovador. Sostenible con una propuesta que integra la ciudad al paisaje. ¿No? Y, y, y tiene también la posibilidad de integrar elementos culturales, infraestructura estratégica para gestionar el espacio para habilitar, o sea, para funcionar como condición habilitante para el desarrollo de actividad productiva, de desarrollo social, que incentiva la movilidad, la proximidad y, el, y la, la articulación de la zona norte con el resto de la ciudad. Porque si, si ustedes conocen la zona norte de la ciudad, ven que está un poco aislada en cierta medida de, 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 de los centros del, de, del resto de la ciudad. Diversa, 
que permite combinar diferentes usos y diferentes intensidades de uso en el territorio. Vivienda, entorno natural, usos productivos como el parque industrial, equipamiento estratégico para investigación y ciencia. Ahí la idea es ver la posibilidad de desarrollar el jardín botánico que, el, que, el, que la ciudad necesita, tener algunas otras facilidades vinculadas al tema científico. Ahí hay algunas instalaciones del Instituto Geofísico del Perú, Estamos viendo, viendo esas opciones también. Con zonas estratégicas para desarrollo logístico metropolitano, el tema de las estaciones, de, de una de las estaciones del tren de cercanías y el tren de mercancías, la posibilidad de tener un, 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 un track center también para atender todo el tema de la demanda eh, que vendría asociada al puerto de Chancay, o sea, tener esta, esta mirada más... más, más este, integral, si se quiere, con una mirada productiva, sectores con industria planificada que incentive el desarrollo de negocios verdes y sostenibles, innovadora, con una gestión nueva, con una gestión donde el principal elemento innovador es la capacidad de coordinar, de coordinar desde diferentes sectores y de trabajar desde las diferentes perspectivas las diferentes necesidades que se tienen para el desarrollo. Aquí esto se ve mejor, ¿no? aquí se ve este, este corte transversal que muestra también el reto que implica un territorio como este, ¿no? con, con, con estas zonas este, montañosas y, este, y estas zonas de desarrollo mucho más denso en la, en, en la parte más baja y toda la interacción que se, que se requiere para lograr que esta zona este, pueda, pueda tener un desarrollo eh, interesante en el, en el largo plazo. ¿Cuáles son los criterios ambientales que se han venido incorporando? Y aquí el trabajo con el Ministerio de la Producción es muy cercano. Este terreno en forma de martillo está dentro de estas 8.000 hectáreas, son alrededor de 1.400. Estos terrenos son de propiedad ya del Ministerio de la Producción. Y lo que se está haciendo es incluir en el diseño estos, estos criterios para, para ir haciendo esta transición hacia lo, lo, lo que señalaba Cristian de la lógica de los parques ecoindustriales, o sea, los parques integrados en una lógica de sostenibilidad, pero una lógica de sostenibilidad no solamente hacia adentro del parque, en términos de cómo las industrias se manejan sus impactos dentro del parque industrial, sino hacia afuera, cómo el parque industrial tiene efectos beneficiosos hacia el entorno natural y hacia el resto del entorno que tiene que ser planificado, el entorno que tiene que ser plan urbano que tiene que ser planificado. Mitigación de riesgos ante fenómenos naturales, como ven, estas zonas de quebrada y zonas altas, eh, cuando se activan, por ejemplo, en, en, en eventos del niño pueden ser muy peligrosas, eso es parte de lo que tiene que ser reconocido. Tratamiento paisajístico, todo el tema de la generación de estas zonas buffer o estas zonas de, de transición entre la zona industrial de uso más intenso y las zonas de protección. El diseño urbano sostenible, o sea, en el mismo diseño del parque, aplicar todos los conocimientos vinculados a como, o sea, los conocimientos más modernos vinculados a la, a la gestión sostenible, la aplicación de energías renovables, la aplicación de este, tratamiento de aguas y todo, el, todo lo que está vinculado a la lógica de economía circular. La gestión del agua sería uno de los temas. Este es uno de los temas críticos. Hay algunos proyectos asociados a hacer desalinización, a trabajar también el tema de utilización de aguas tratadas post eh, proceso industrial para hacer, por ejemplo, regadío de las zonas de, de desarrollo y de, de reforestación que habría en las, zonas, en las zonas más altas, ahí hay un tema nuevamente de entrar en la lógica de la economía circular. Todo el tema del manejo de eficiencia energética y la utilización de energías renovables, el tema de la eficiencia en movilidad y cómo planificar esto como integrado a todo el proceso, además de planificación de la movilidad para toda la zona de Ancón y toda la zona del norte, del norte de Lima, sin duda eficiencia en la gestión de los residuos sólidos el tema o la lógica de edificaciones sostenibles, el green building y todo, toda la aplicación de estos de estas nuevas eh, enfoques ¿no? en, en el tema de la gestión eh, térmica, en el tema ¿no? de, 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 asociado también a, 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 al tema de gestión de agua, gestión de residuos, ventilación natural, iluminación natural, el tema de las bajas emisiones en carbono, o sea, cómo hacemos para reducir la huella al mínimo y cómo hacemos para que el trabajo de, de, de industrial y la dinámica económica que se genera alrededor permita cubrir también los costos de conservación, los costos de gestión y de planificación eh, al, alrededor. ¿no? O sea, cómo hacemos para que haya un, una especie de, 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 de apoyo cruzado, de financiamiento cruzado que permita llegar o, o cumplir los objetivos de todo este espacio. La lógica aquí o, o lo que manda aquí el concepto 
Madre es un solo proyecto visto de manera integral, porque si dividimos este espacio en pequeños parcelitas y lo vamos repartiendo, no vamos a poder tener el impacto que se tendría si se ve todo integrado. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. I think looking at this vision, it shows very well what is the potential of an eco-industrial park to go back from the image which industries had in the past as polluting entities towards a complex which can positively integrated, be integrated into sustainable cities. And I think that's what we're going also to hear from Professor Hung Sak Park, how eco-industrial development can take place. Eco-industrial parks are one integral element of this approach. And it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Hung Sang Park. He's a professor of civil and en environmental engineering. He has, be he has been the director of the Center for Clean Technology and Resource Recycling from 2004 till 2017, as well as of the Center for Green Construction Material from 2011 till 2016 at the Uni University of Ulsan in South Korea. Since 2004, Professor Park has also been director of Ulsan of the Ulsan Eco-Industrial Park Center for some 10 years and has expanded his managing capacity until 2014 as the Director General of the East-South Region Eco-Industrial Park Initiative, including the Ulsan Eco-Industrial Park Center at the Korea Industrial Complex Corporation in South Korea. In 2018, Professor Park established the non-profit Ulsan Eco-Industrial Development Center which is fully endorsed by the Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy to continue eco-industrial development consultations in Ulsan, Korea, as well as overseas. Professor Park's industrial ecology research and business interests are focused on the development of uh, business development modules for industries situated in eco-industrial parks through qualitative and quantitative analysis. The management of resources and energy as well as the identification of sustainable business opportunities for investors and stakeholders. For his applied scientific research and green business development efforts, for his park has been awarded the best research and development award from the Ministry of Land, Transportation and Marine Affairs in 2011. In 2013, he has been awarded the Korean Green Management Grand Prix or Grand Prize from the Prime Minister in 2015 the Service Merit Medal of Science and Technology from the Government of Korea. Professor Park has been invited to present on eco-industrial development and green growth in countries including China, Japan, Thailand, India and Taiwan, and by organizations such, such as UNIDO, OECD, and the International Financial Corporation. He also has experience in consulting UNESCO and the World Bank IFC projects. Mr. P uh, Professor Park holds a bachelor in degree in environmental engineering from the University of Seoul, a master degree and a PhD in environmental engineering from the Korea Advanced Institute for Science and Technology in Korea. With Korea being one of the countries which has demonstrated best practice in the implementation of the eco-industrial park concept, Professor Park will share with us the process of establishing eco-industrial parks in the Republic of Korea. Furthermore, he will provide us with an overview of the present status of eco-industrial parks in the Republic of South Korea. Professor Park, it's a pleasure and honor to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, nice introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to share the Korean experience uh, with uh, uh, the guests uh, many different countries, uh, especially uh, as you know that uh, Korea is a very unique country uh, from uh, 1962. Uh, this morning uh, we introduced uh, Director General Lee Young, uh, 1962 uh, Korean uh, start uh, maybe industrial industrialization. So the slogan was that to end the poverty so as you know, the uh, Korean War in uh, 1950s, during the three years uh, Korean War, all the infrastructure is destroyed. 
So uh, in 1962, anybody can guess the GNP in Korea, 1962? It's less than $100. Actually, it was $82. So we start from there. So we mobilized all the resources and very strategic uh, industry policies. Our policy was selection and concentration. So we have to start very light industry. The first industry was uh, fertilizer. We have to uh, support the agricultural sector to uh, maybe increase the uh, food uh, su supply. And then we expand to uh, chemical and also machinery, automobile, shipbuilding, IT. So we advanced the industry uh, maybe decade basis. So now uh, the Korea is, can be uh, OECD country. In 1962, we were the recipient country, but uh, now we are the donor countries. So our developing industrialization uh, process is very well requested in many developing countries as uh, knowledge sharing programs. So EIP is one of the very highlighted the program. So that's why uh, I'm very honored to, uh, to share the, our uh, industrial innovation process. Our Korean EIP program is nothing but the process of industrial innovation. So it's not the regulation or the control. It's totally business-oriented, creative, collective business uh, topics. So uh, OK, so the EIP is nothing but EIP is started from the uh, Kalenberg. Kalenberg case, you can see here, uh, step by step during the 30 years, all this industrial symbiosis networking was established. It was not planned. It was not guided by the facilitator or the policymakers. It was a spontaneous market-based business to businesses contract make this happen. So we know uh, this uh, successful industrial collaboration uh, systems to replicate. This is nothing but the EIP program. But still, we are very less success story. We have good idea this uh, concept can be applied in new industrial development or uh, green field development and brown field development, and we can apply this concept to retropication of traditional industrial park like uh, Korea. Right now, we have 1,200 industrial park in my countries. In my city, we have 30 industrial park. My city, 1.2 million population, we produce the peak time 10 billion US dollar we export. So huge energy and resources are using in my cities. So that's why in 1980s, Ulsan city was known as most polluted in the Korea, even the world. So 1980s, Ulsan city was designated as a special pollution control zone from the Ministry of Environment. So from that, we have to innovate our systems. So, OK, so based on the survey, the uh, eco innovator report, which is supported by SECO, uh, So the factor criteria of the success have 12. So energy efficiency, resource efficiency, water 
efficiency, and uh, uh, rent management, all these 12 criteria can be uh, a key component of eco-industrial park. But based on the uh, survey, only in, uh, in the world we have more than 500 industrial parks, but only very small uh, industrial park have this criteria, all these criteria. Most of the industrial park have two or three criteria. Common facilities and waste management system and some recycling, that was their eco-industrial park. This is the current situation. So Korea also have a very strategic master plan to replicate the Columbur case to Korean situation. So we have a first demonstration phase, five industrial park, and we disseminate, and then uh, we have to uh, what can I say, expand all this concept to nationwide. So three-step concept was implemented. But the basic was that business cases. So you already know the, what is the, uh, the ESCO project. ESCO project is nothing but energy saving performance contract businesses. So based on the current uh, system, inefficiency, we have some rooms to improve the systems. So uh, ESCO contract, we can save the energy and this save can be uh, repaid for the investment and after the contract, the, the, what can I say, the saved money is continuously going to the owners. So this concept can replicate to the industrial shimbaishi. So we are trying to uh, expand this ESCO concept to ISCO. So we are, Korean government are trying to make uh, this new system, resource, resource businesses. So eco-industrial park or eco-industrial development is nothing but a new development strategy based on the resource. So this is my cases. We have some step-by-step uh, -step how we can implement this idea in the real field. So during the, uh, uh, the, the our ERP programs, I make develop this uh, continuous uh, contraction process. So based on this uh, collaboration, we can save 15% of energy in this area without money. So from that, we can find huge opportunities. If you collaborate, we can create the value. So this is the history, why, how, how much of money is spent for Korean cases. We have very small government research fund, but using the research fund to create a business model and attract the stakeholders and make a negotiation and contract and construction and operation. So we have to managing and uh, continuously support the, the post-construction uh, businesses. So by this type of very small uh, activities, we have con uh, the convinced we can change the in industrial infrastructure, industrial manufacturing systems, adopting a new technology and the new ideas. We can, uh, uh, in Korea government, we are trying to renovate the industrial park totally different way. So that's why we are now applying the advanced IT, IoT technology into industrial park innovation. So that's why we are going to uh, maybe have very different uh, success story, small, small success story collaboration together, then we can uh, mainstream and scale up our concept to, in the real field. So, uh, Korean government is very strongly, uh, strong desire to disseminate the, our uh, experience, our uh, experience to developing country to uh, collaborate to uh, maintain this uh, world to be more sustainable. So uh, that's why we are trying to international uh, center for eco-industrial development in my university, with the support of the UNIDO, 
from the Korean government funding. So this uh, international center will operate next year, from next year. So we have more opportunity to collaborate in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Park. I think this example of Korea can really demonstrate in a very credible way and can give an extremely good example to all our partners which from whom we cooperate, how we can move from a rather unpleasant status. We've heard what the situation was in 1962 in Korea, and we know where Korea stands today. And it happened without imposing ex negative externalities on the environment and people. So this decoupling from economic growth and resource consumption and pollution has taken place, it's feasible. And our lunch panel or our lunch session was dedicated to South-South cooperation, who then Korea can more credibly demonstrate that it is possible, that it is feasible, this transition. And it's my pleasure now to introduce the next panelist, Mr. Peter Martin, he is the head of the Economic Development Corporation of the Swiss Embassy here in Peru. SECO is a long trusted partner for UNIDO. We've been cooperating on the global RCP program and we have just jointly launched now the global eco-industrial park program. Martin Peter is the head of the Economic Development Corporation at the Swiss Embassy in Peru since 2014. Previously, he held the position of program manager on issues related to trade and development, as well as the position of the country officer of bilateral economic relations with Latin America at the State Secretariat of Economic Affairs in Bern, Switzerland. Before joining SECO, Mr. Peter worked on issues related to international trade, labor conditions, vocational training, as well as social conflicts in the private, public, as well as in the NGO sectors in Switzerland, Nepal, and Peru. He holds an MSc in International Cooperation and Development of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich and the MSc in International Relations of the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva, Switzerland. Mr. Peters will provide us with an overview on the role of SECO in promoting eco-industrial parks as well as an overview of SECO's history and activities in promoting eco-industrial parks. Please share with us the rich experience Seiko has in this field. Muchas gracias, Cristian. Damas y caballeros, eh, mi presentación está en inglés, pero como para balancear un poco el panel, decidí hablar en, en español. Y bueno, antes que todo, quisiera agradecer a los organizadores de esta conferencia por invitarme y poder compartir eh, la experiencia que tiene SECO en el tema de parques ecoindustriales. Para arrancar, para situar un poco SECO, quisiera brevemente contarles qué es lo que hacemos acá en el Perú. Eh, tenemos tres grandes líneas de trabajo definido bajo nuestra estrategia país para los años 2017 al 2020, eh, el primero siendo eh, la goberna, enfocado en la, una buena gobernanza económica a través de políticas e instituciones eh, económicas estables, eficientes e inclusivas, eh, donde trabajamos más que todo en gestión de finanzas públicas. Un segundo pilar es la promoción de un sector privado competitivo y responsable, y con Y, no irresponsable. Eh, y el tercer pilar, eh, la promoción de un desarrollo urbano sostenible, resiliente al cambio climático, eh, que permita un crecimiento verde. Es obvio que no hay una limitación muy clara entre esos tres pilares eh, lo ven en, en las intersecciones de esos, eh, de esos tres círculos. Eh, el tema que nos congrega hoy día está enfocado más que todo en este tercer pilar, pero obviamente tiene un vínculo muy estrecho con el sector privado competitivo y responsable. Bueno, todo ello nos debería ayudar a, 
a promocionar un desarrollo económico sostenible, balanceado a nivel regional eh, y que permita también un acercamiento a los estándares de buena gobernanza económica a nivel internacional, ya sea de la OCTE o de otras instituciones, con el fin de crear eh, oportunidades para todas y todos los peruanos. Bueno, eh, a nivel global, obviamente nos, nuestros objetivos no son muy distintos. También queremos un escalamiento de la productividad, de la eficiencia de los recursos. Queremos eh, mejorar el, el desempeño económico, pero también ambiental y social de las empresas y así poder contribuir, contribuir a un desarrollo industrial sostenible y también inclusivo. Eh, los parques ecoindustriales nos parecen una herramienta muy adecuada para hacerlo, y eso por varias razones. Por ejemplo, eh, los parques permiten eh, brindar un marco apropiado para un desarrollo sostenible, porque eh, las empresas que están dentro de esos parques tienen que cumplir con ciertos estándares para que los parques mismos se puedan llamar parques ecoindustriales. Eh, al mismo tiempo, también hacia afuera, eh, el mismo gobierno va a establecer ciertas normas, estándares, para que un parque se pueda llamar esta, eh, eh, ecoindustrial. Entonces, eh, tanto a nivel de los parques a través del, de los ministerios responsables como a nivel de las empresas, a través del parque mismo, se va a impulsar eh, mayor ecoeficiencia. Eh, con ello se podrán eh, ojalá reducir y minimizar los impactos negativos, las externalidades eh, negativas que pueden tener las actividades económicas. Eh, pero, y acá quiero enfatizar, eso no debería ir en detrimento de la productividad de las empresas. De las empresas. Bien al contrario, eh, en realidad mayor ecoeficiencia, como lo dice el término de eficiencia, debería permitir a reducir los costos y hacer las empresas más productivas. Todo ello entonces nos debería permitir de promocionar un, un desarrollo bajo en emisiones y resiliente al cambio climático. Ahora, eh, ¿qué hace SECO y qué venimos haciendo en los últimos años en este tema? Pues ya desde el fin de la, del siglo pasado eh, estamos promocionando lo que se llama los, los National Cleaner Production Centers, centros de producción más limpia, eh, a nivel de distintos países, en realidad acá en Perú existe uno, el, el CER, no sé si han escuchado hablar del Centro de Ecoeficiencia y Responsabilidad Social eh, implementado por el Grupo GEA, eh, y finalmente este centro brinda asesoría a las empresas que quieren ser más ecoeficientes. Puede brindarles asistencia, asesoría en cuanto a tecnologías, procesos, etc. Eh, eso lo hemos hecho en, en muchos países alrededor del mundo eh, y a partir del 2012, eh, conjuntamente con ONUDI, eh, Uno Ambiente, se ha establecido un nuevo programa para, en cierto modo, escalar este enfoque, el, eh, el RECP Program, eh, que abarcaba países como Perú, Colombia y muchos otros. Ahí, por un lado, eh, bueno, se ha continuado fortaleciendo los, los centros de, de ecoeficiencia, los centros de, de producción más limpia en los distintos países, pero también se ha buscado crear una red entre, estas, entre estos centros para que puedan intercambiar información, intercambiar eh, eh, información y, y experiencias y así promover un, una política de, justamente de eficiencia de recursos entre ellos. Eh, 
también se ha enfocado en reducir eh, residuos, desechos en las empresas. Eh, creo que ahora sí se habla mucho de la economía circular. Eh, justamente, eh, desechos no tienen que ser eh, inutilizables. Los desechos de una empresa se pueden tal vez eh, utilizar en otra empresa como insumo. Eh, y así justamente crear este círculo vicioso y no eh, virtuoso y no vicioso. Un tema muy importante eh, es el tema financiero. Eh, es normalmente ecoeficiencia si sí demanda ciertas inversiones, por lo tanto las empresas tienen que tener acceso al financiamiento y eso es un eje que también se ha trabajado en la fase de este programa. Eh, bueno. ¿Qué se ha logrado en estos años? Se ha logrado, por ejemplo, establecer una red de distintos centros de ecoeficiencia alrededor del mundo. También la Universidad Ulsan del Profesor Park, por ejemplo, hace parte de esa red, el ser acá hace parte de esa red. Eh, se han desarrollado distintas metodologías, distintas herramientas, por ejemplo, eh, un manual para el establecimiento de, de parques ecoindustriales y tal vez para enfocar en un caso concreto que es el Perú, se ha hecho un pequeño piloto en, en el Callao con 22 eh, empresas en esta zona industrial eh, que han recibido un asesoramiento y a través de, de las evaluaciones, 22 evaluaciones que se han hecho en esas empresas, se han identificado más de 100 opciones de mejora en cuanto a ecoeficiencia. Eh, se ha identificado con, que con una inversión de solamente eh, de 4 millones, bueno, no es solamente 4 millones, se podía ahorrar más de 50, 550 toneladas de, de CO2 por año, eh, 100 mil metros cúbicos de, de de agua eh, y eso demandaría, eso también permitiría eh, ahorros de un, millón, de un millón por año, o sea, en menos de cuatro años se debería poder recuperar esta in inversión inicial. Eh, bueno, veo que se me acabó el tiempo, el último slide solamente para decirles, bueno, no vamos a dejarlo acá. Eh, tenemos un nuevo programa con ONUDI que justo hoy día se va a firmar un, un convenio también eh, con PRODUCE que va a, ojalá, permitir de impulsar más esa idea de los ecoparques industriales. Tal vez más adelante tendré la oportunidad de entrar un poco en mayor detalle sobre lo que está planificado bajo este nuevo programa. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Martin. I think the key message which we have received now was it makes business sense to become resource efficient and cleaner. Just these last figures shared, $4 million investment which have allowed companies to save $1 million a year. So it means the return on investment can be achieved in four years. And this is the language the industry likes to hear. This is the language they need to hear. If they want to be sustainable, they also need to be sustainable in business. So and this is what resource efficient and cleaner production can really demonstrate. It is a win-win situation. On one hand, companies are shown what they can do to become more efficient, to become more profitable. At the same time, their environmental impacts are being reduced. And last but not least, I would like to introduce our fourth panelists and there is no gender discrimination. Unfortunately, we only found one female panelist for our panel. And there's also no discrimination that our colleague from the World Bank speaks last. Martin will have to leave us. He mentioned that there is this signing ceremony taking place, so there's a risk that he might have to dash out at 10 to 6. Therefore, our colleague Na Yun Shin from the World Bank Group kindly agreed to speak last. Otherwise, I would have given her the stage as the third speaker. Nayu Shin has a Master of Science in Urban Planning from the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She worked as a researcher on the Clean Energy City Project in China and with the Korea Environment Institute, where she assisted the Korean Ministry of Environment to manage the Seoul Initiative 
Network on Green Growth jointly with UNESCAP. She was also one of the main contributing authors to a practitioner handbook for eco-industrial parks jointly written by the World Bank Group, UNIDO, and GIZ. Uh, Na Yun has more than eight years of research and operational experience in the area of sustainable and resilient urban industrial development. Cur currently, Na Yun is a senior consultant with the work World Bank Group's finance competi competitiveness and innovation global practice. One of our main tasks is to provide advisory support to client countries to enhance competitiveness of their manufacturing industries through eco-industrial park projects and measures to improve industrial resilience. In her presentation, Na Yun will give us an overview of the role of the World Bank Group in promoting eco-industrial parks, as well as an overview of the World Bank Group's history and activities in promoting eco-industrial parks. Na Yun, please share with us your experience, the World Bank Group's role. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. It's, uh, I'm very pleased and honored to be part of this uh, panel discussion and introduce you the World Bank's approach to eco-industrial park. The key message that I want to deliver here today to you is that eco-industrial park is a very important tool for promoting industrial competitiveness while ensuring environmental and social sustainability. And we can help promote EIP in eco-industrial parks in this country, in this region, and the world. Let me give you a little bit background about why we need eco-industrial parks around this time. Um, global market demand for sustainable and green products is rapidly increasing. So the global market size for green products is about five tr uh, trillion US dollars. And global buyers and investors like Nike, H&M, uh, Unilever, they are taking and implementing sustainability initiatives really seriously. And um, more than 60% of 250 top business executives said that they're taking sustainability-related investments seriously. What this means uh, for the countries in the South um, and developing countries uh, is that uh, and, and, and the government officials and industrial park operators and developer, developers and also the investment promotion agencies is that they are increasingly more required to meet these kind of sustainability criteria that are uh, required by uh, global investors and buyers. At the same time, countries of the, in the South and actually many countries in the world are increasingly more vulnerable to uh, uh, the impact of climate change, extreme weather events, and natural disasters. So in 2017 alone, um, the impact, the economic losses from the climate change resulted in 330 billion US dollars. And for example, in 2011, in Thailand, there was a severe flood um, event and this had cost around 32 billion US dollars in the manufacturing sector alone. And this had a huge impact on the uh, both domestic and global supply chain of the automotive manufacturing and electronics manufacturing sectors. Um, so the failures to address these kinds of climate change challenges are seen as the top business risks according to the World Economic Forum. Eco-industrial parks help address these kinds of global market demands as well as the various challenges that the world is facing without sacrificing the economic um, benefits that industrial parks bring. In fact, they help improve the economic competitiveness of the industrial parks by increasing the savings on the utility cost, also by increasing the linkages between foreign direct investment and local farms in the, in the supply chain, and also by incentivizing uh, investments related to sustainable infrastructures and technologies. Also, from the environmental perspective, eco-industrial parks help 
uh, reduce significantly greenhouse gas emissions, waste generated from, um, from the industrial parks, and also improve the energy and water efficiency. From the social perspective as well, eco-industrial parks can help improve the labor and um, working conditions of the, of, of the employees, including the female employees, by providing um, social facilities like childcare facilities, vocational training centers, and create jobs for the locals and improve the uh, grievance mechanisms within the industrial parks. The World Bank's approach is to maximize these kinds of collective benefits by introducing um, sustainable and resilient infrastructures and measures and addressing many barriers like policy barriers, regulatory barriers, financial barriers, um, technical barriers, and institutional barriers. So some of these measures include, for example, introducing the advanced water, wa wastewater treatment facility and introducing the farm level, resource level, uh, resource efficiency measures such as the LED lighting systems or green buildings uh, or uh, increasing the circularity of the water and waste through the industrial symbiosis projects uh, and other green infrastructure uh, projects and also increasing the renewable, the use of renewable energy options by installing, for example, solar panels on the rooftop of the factory shells and introducing the resilient infrastructure such as the flood protection barriers the, or the em embankments surrounding the industrial parks to protect the resident farms from the impact of the extreme weather events. All of these measures and approaches have been integrated into our World Bank's uh, various projects. So we first started off with the low carbon zone uh, development project in Bangladesh in Bangladesh around 2010, and we helped uh, Bangladesh Export Processing Zone Authority to uh, drastically reduce the carbon emissions from that export processing zone. Since then, we also worked with uh, a, a Ministry of Planning and Investment in Vietnam, also with UNIDO, uh, and to transform the existing industrial parks into eco-industrial parks. And also we are working with the um, government of Turkey, the Ministry of Science, Industry and Technology, uh, and develop the National Green Industrial Organized Zone, Organized Industrial Zone Framework, and helping the industrial parks to, uh, to develop the, and move toward the eco-industrial park status. In African region, we also have um, in working with the on the eco industrial park project in Ethiopia, and also promoted the green construction and cleaner uh, textile sector uh, in these uh, regions uh, in, in countries, including Senegal and Nigeria and Kenya. Also in. Um, Latin American region, uh, we primarily worked um, to improve the standards and labels around the e improving energy efficiency and resource efficiency. And we are currently trying to develop the sustainable industries program in countries like Nicaragua, uh, El Salvador, and uh, Honduras, and Guatemala. Based on this experience in various projects, uh, we have generated a series of knowledge products, including the international framework for eco-industrial parks that we developed together our part with our partners, UNIDO and GIZ. We also uh, developed handbook and toolboxes uh, with which the practitioners like you, uh, the government officials, industrial park operators can use uh, to transform their existing industrial parks to eco-industrial parks or to develop new industrial park in alignment with the international framework for eco-industrial park. So to give you a very basic information about this framework, this is a framework that can be commonly applied to various types of industrial parks, including the, uh, for example, SME industrial parks that uh, Peru has been developing. Uh, and also, regardless of their sizes, regardless of the ownership of the park, and regardless of the sectors that are hosted within the industrial parks. And it has four different 
performance criteria categories, including the industrial park management, eco, uh, ec economic performance, environmental performance, and social performance. Uh, under these criteria, there are indicators and targets with which the practitioners can use and assess their existing parks um, and try to move from the existing current situation to meet the targets and design some of the action items based on these. Uh, World Bank's approach to implementing the international framework has been integrative and comprehensive as we provide the technical assistance and also uh, the project financing uh, and construction loans. And also after that, we make sure we engage the stakeholders from the beginning and uh, during the operation and after the implementation process and we closely monitor the implementation progress and identify areas for further improvement so that the countries have the ownership of these programs and projects. Uh, so we believe that based on this integrative approach that we have and also with uh, partnering with UNIDO and GIZ, we can help promote eco-industrial parks in, uh, in this region, in this country, including Peru and, and on, in the world. And um, IFC, International Finance Corporation, which is one of the four subgroups of the World Bank, has recently established the energy efficient way, uh, um, the warehouse facility near Lima. And we believe that leveraging this kind of existing projects and programs and facilities, we can help promote eco-industrial parks in this region. Finally, this is the list of information uh, that we have on the international framework, handbook, and the toolbox. So we, uh, I would like to encourage you to visit these websites and take a look. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. and. For me, I'm a relatively new member in the Eco-Industrial Park family, but I'm proud to be a member. It's nice to work with these colleagues. It's really, and if you look at it, I think this is the development we need. When I speak to my children who are 19 years old, this is the direction we need to have for them to grow into a prosperous world in a world where we can live well and where our environment can support us, and even more important for the next generation. Just quickly allow me to share how we will continue with our panel. We have prepared a series of questions, or one set of questions for each of the panelists, which I will read out and they will be answered by the panelists. Please already bear in mind that afterwards we'll have a question and answer session in which you encourage to ask panelists questions and they should all be geared towards what can we do together, what do we need to do to achieve a global rollout and an upscaling of the eco-industrial park project for future we want to live in, and for future our next generations want to live in. My first question goes to the Honorable Vice Minister. Can you please share with us which environmental, economic, and social benefit? The World Bank's approach is to maximize these kinds of collective benefits by introducing um, sustainable and resilient infrastructures and measures and addressing many barriers like policy barriers, regulatory barriers, financial barriers, um, technical barriers, and institutional barriers. So some of these measures include, for example, introducing the advanced water, wa wastewater treatment facility and introducing the farm level, resource level, uh, resource efficiency measures such as the LED lighting systems or green buildings uh, or uh, increasing the circularity of the water and waste through the industrial symbiosis projects uh, and other green infrastructure uh, projects and also increasing the renewable, the use of renewable energy options by installing, for example, solar panels on the rooftop of the factory shells and introducing the resilient infrastructure such as the flood protection barriers the, or the embankments surrounding the industrial parks to protect the resident farms from the impact of the extreme weather events. 
all of these measures and approaches have been integrated into our World Bank's uh, various projects. So we first started off with the low carbon zone uh, development project in Bangladesh in Bangladesh around 2010, and we helped uh, Bangladesh Export Processing Zone Authority to uh, drastically reduce the carbon emissions from that export processing zone. Since then, we also worked with uh, a, a Ministry of Planning and Investment in Vietnam, also with UNIDO, uh, and to transform the existing industrial parks into eco-industrial parks. And also, we are working with the um, government of Turkey, the Ministry of Science, Industry, and Technology, uh, and develop the National Green Industrial Organized Zone, Organized Industrial Zone Framework, and helping the industrial parks to, uh, to develop the, and move toward the eco-industrial park status. In African region, we also have um, in working with the on the eco industrial park project in Ethiopia, and also promoted the green construction and cleaner uh, textile sector uh, in these uh, regions uh, in, in countries, including Senegal and Nigeria and Kenya. Also in. Um, Latin American region, uh, we primarily worked um, to improve the standards and labels around the e improving energy efficiency and resource efficiency. And we're currently trying to develop the sustainable industries program in countries like Nicaragua, uh, El Salvador, and uh, Honduras, and Guatemala. Based on this experience in various projects, uh, we have generated a series of knowledge products, including the international framework for eco-industrial parks that we developed together our part with our partners, UNIDO and GIZ. We also uh, developed handbook and toolboxes uh, with which the practitioners like you, uh, the government officials, industrial park operators can use uh, to transform their existing industrial parks to eco-industrial parks or to develop new industrial park in alignment with the international framework for eco-industrial park. So to give you a very basic information about this framework, this is a framework that can be commonly applied to various types of industrial parks, including the, uh, for example, SME industrial parks that uh, Peru has been developing. Uh, and also, regardless of their sizes, regardless of the ownership of the park, and regardless of the sectors that are hosted within the industrial parks. And it has four different performance criteria categories, including the industrial park management, eco, uh, e economic performance, environmental performance, and social performance. Uh, under these criteria, there are indicators and targets with which the practitioners can use and assess their existing parks um, and try to move from the existing current situation to meet the targets and design some of the action items based on these. Uh, World Bank's approach to implementing the international framework has been integrative and comprehensive as we provide the technical assistance and also uh, the project financing uh, and construction loans. And also after that, we make sure we engage the stakeholders from the beginning and uh, during the operation and after the implementation process, and we closely monitor the implementation progress and identify areas for further improvement so that the countries have the ownership of these programs and projects. Uh, so we believe that based on this integrative approach that we have, and also with uh, partnering with UNIDO and GIZ, we can help promote eco-industrial parks in, uh, in this region, in this country, including Peru and, and on, in the world. And um, IFC, International Finance Corporation, which is one of the four subgroups of the World Bank, has recently established the energy efficient way, uh, um, the warehouse facility near Lima. And we believe that leveraging this kind of existing projects 
and programs and facilities, we can help promote eco-industrial parks in this region. Finally, this is the list of information uh, that we have on the international framework, handbook, and the toolbox. So we, uh, I'd like to encourage you to visit these websites and take a look. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And for me, I'm a relative new member in the Eco-Industrial Park family. But I'm proud to be a member. It's nice to work with these colleagues. It's really, and if you look at it, I think this is the development we need. When I speak to my children, who are, not, who are 19 years old, this is the direction we need to have for them to grow into a prosperous world, in a world where we can live well and where our environment can support us. And even more important, for the next generation. Just quickly allow me to share how we will continue with our panel. We have prepared a series of questions, or one set of questions for each of the panelists, which I will read out and they will be answered by the panelists. Please already bear in mind that afterwards we'll have a question and answer session in which you encourage to ask panelists questions and they should all be geared towards what can we do together, what do we need to do to achieve a global rollout and an upscaling of the eco-industrial park project for future we want to live in, and for future our next generations want to live in. My first question goes to the Honorable Vice Minister. Can you please share with us which environmental, economic, and social benefits the government of Peru expects from designing and building new eco-industrial parks? You have mentioned the project you're preparing, or from retrofit, retrofitting existing parks. Which short, mid, and long-term perspectives does the government of Peru have for eco-industrial parks, and which support does the gov government need in this process from its development partners? It's a reto grande. It's a reto el poder trabajar de manera integrada este este esta esta visión de cómo los parques industriales pueden tener, jugar un papel importante en generar una serie de beneficios, eh, no solo asociados al desarrollo de una política industrial más sostenible, sino generar unos co-beneficios vinculados a, a, a otros sectores. ¿no? O sea, cómo se convierten en un, en un factor para lograr ordenar la ciudad. Por ejemplo, en el caso para aquellos que conocen clima, cómo... cómo mejorar la situación de, de, de toda esta zona industrial de la avenida Argentina, cómo opciones como la del parque de Ancón podrían ayudar a revalorizar la ciudad, ¿no? llevando estas zonas industriales que ahora han quedado dentro de la ciudad y tienen toda una serie de retos y problemas asociados por la cercanía con la zona residencial, cómo llevarlas a otras, a otras zonas más adecuadas y poder generar eh, este proceso de, 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 de mejora En la, en, en la calidad urbana. Entonces, el beneficio no es solamente en términos, como les digo, de, de la concentración de las actividades, de las economías de escala, sino también que hay, hay con beneficios asociados a la planificación urbana, a la mejora de las condiciones de calidad de vida, mejora de condiciones de salud de las poblaciones que viven, que viven en estas zonas. ¿no? Creo que la, la apuesta va, va por ese lado. ¿Y cómo, cómo hacemos que eso sea, además, ent entendido en una lógica en la cual Eh, estos, estos procesos de toma de decisión sobre el espacio orientados a impulsar políticas estratégicas de Estado como esta de desarrollo industrial eh, tienen que estar alineadas con, con otras políticas, con las políticas de movilidad, con la política este, de articulación territorial que impulsa no solo el gobierno nacional sino también los gobiernos locales, los gobiernos Este, municipales, ¿no? o sea, ¿qué, qué, qué, qué tan integrado está el proceso de planificación de los parques industriales al plan metropolitano, por ejemplo, al plan metropolitano de desarrollo de la ciudad, qué, qué tan eh, y qué tan eh, en cuenta se tienen eh, las necesidades que va a tener, por ejemplo, un desarrollo industrial en términos de la disponibilidad de agua, en términos del tratamiento post eh, consumo del agua, en términos de la gestión de los residuos sólidos, ¿no? o sea, cómo, cómo estas eh, articulaciones territoriales, si se quiere, de la actividad, de la actividad industrial empiezan a generar estos, estos eh, círculos virtuosos, ¿no? círculos virtuosos 
de, de, que, que generan impulso económico, pero también generan mejora en las, en las condiciones ambientales, en las condiciones sociales este, en, en los alrededores. Gracias. Thank you very much. Since I got signs from Martin that he has to leave us soon, I would like to pose the next question to him. And this is, can you please share with us why SECO has decided to support the eco-industrial park concept? How SECO is supporting its, uh, its partner countries to overcome the many barriers that exist in designing new eco-industrial parks or even more difficult to support the transition from existing industrial parks towards eco-industrial parks. Martin. Hello. Bueno, muchas gracias por la, la pregunta. Como eh, dije en mi presentación, como seco hemos estado muy, eh, por mucho tiempo activo en el tema de la producción limpia y ecoeficiente, eh, con resultados bastante prometedores. Sin embargo, eh, considerando el enorme desafío eh, asumido por la comunidad internacional en 2015 en, en París de limitar el calentamiento global a menos de 2%, eh, y bueno, dado las consecuencias eh, nefastas eh, de este calentamiento que han sido muy bien presentados ya por la colega del Banco Mundial, Creo que es bastante claro que el trabajo que hemos hecho hasta ahora, empresa por empresa, eh, en realidad no es suficiente. Eh, tenemos que encontrar una, una manera de escalar nuestro esfuerzo y eh, el concepto de los parques ecoindustriales eco, eco que agrupan eh, a varias empresas nos parece la vía adecuada. Eh, que justamente van a permitir de hacer las economías de escala que Cristian mencionó en su, en su introducción, van a permitir de aprovechar de, de oportunidades de simbiosis industrial o de, de economía circular, etc. Entonces, eh, ¿qué vamos a hacer conjuntamente con UNUDI eh, para promocionar esos ecoparques industriales en los próximos años? Quisiera darles tal vez el el ejemplo de Perú, que es el que conozco mejor. Eh, tenemos previsto ahí un, un trabajo a varios niveles. No es el nivel normativo, donde se apoyará al, al gobierno peruano, bueno, en particular a, a Produce como rector, pero obviamente también otros actores, como por ejemplo Minam, acá presente, porque no los gobiernos subnacionales en diseñar políticas, estándares, normas eh, para permitir impulsar ese concepto de los parques ecoindustriales. Eh, y eso puede, esos estándares, normas se pueden aplicar a nuevos proyectos como el eh, presentado por el viceministro Quejandría, eh, pero también para el enverdecimiento de parques industriales existentes, tal como también lo ha existido. Eh, lo ha explicado muy bien eh, la colega del Banco Mundial, Na Yushin. Permit, eh, excuse, excuse my, my bad pronunciation. Eh, bueno, todo eso debería permitir, ojalá, a lo que llamamos un mainstreaming del concepto de parques industriales. Sin embargo, eh, como cooperación no tenemos el brazo financiero para poder trabajar con todos los parques eh, se van a seleccionar dos o tres parques eh, que pueden servir como, como modelos, como pilotos, para demostrar las, los beneficios potenciales de este concepto de ecoparques. Eh, se va a trabajar a nivel de los operadores de los parques, capacitándolos para que ellos puedan mejorar sus servicios hacia las empresas que, que hacen parte de esos ecoparques, eh, y también se va a trabajar con las empresas individuales dentro de esos parques para que puedan mejorar su ecoeficiencia y justamente eh, aprovechar las oportunidades existentes de economías de escala, de economía circular, 
etcétera. Finalmente se va a trabajar a nivel global también en herramientas, en, en eh, toolboxes pa, y en la sensibilización de los gobiernos de la, de la población en general sobre el tema. Muchas gracias. Y bueno, me, me disculpo, no es que temo sus preguntas, bueno, tal vez un poquito, pero realmente me, me tengo que ausentar para justamente suscribir este este convenio que nos va a permitir de, de implementar el nuevo programa acá en Perú. Así que muchas gracias por su atención y muchas gracias nuevamente a los organizadores y a mis co-penalistas. Thank you very much, Martin. The next question goes to Professor Park. We have heard about the tremendous success Korea had in implementing the eco-industrial park approach. So, the potential ben beneficial impact of the eco-industrial park model is being demonstrated in the Republic of Korea, where more than 1,000 companies in industries which are as diverse as vehicle manufacturing, shipbuilding and oil refining call the Ulsan Mipu and Onsan Industrial Park in South Korea, their home. Collectively, these industries employ 100,000 people. And the industrial park serves as the South Korean industrial capital. Ulsan Mipu and Onsan Park is part of South Korea's eco-industrial park initiative, which seeks to transform traditional industrial complexes into sustainable eco-industrial parks. Can you please share with us why the government of the Republic of Korea has decided to launch an eco-industrial park initiative, and how South Korea has managed to overcome the many barriers that exist in designing and building new eco-industrial parks or in retrofitting existing parks. I think all our participants here would like to know what is the secret of Korea's success. Please share it with us. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, as you mentioned, in Ulsan Industry Park, there are huge uh, uh, industry tenants are already located, working employees is more than 100,000. Uh, so they are very well mixed, so a very global scale uh, Unit factory like a Hyundai automobile, uh, maybe, and also SK Corporation Hyundai Shipbuilding is a very, very big one. But we also have small and medium sized uh, tier companies there. Uh, and also we have huge uh, recycling company. We have 400 recycling company in my uh, cities. So uh, our strategy is how we can uh, value up the resources. So uh, in industry ecology, we are considered the uh, earth system is totally closed to the system. All the materials are the same from the start of the earth. And the, the driving force of uh, the uh, maybe global uh, the energy source is only the solar energy. So we are considering the, like, uh, the ecosystem to the, the eco-industry park is nothing but to uh, transform this uh, uh, natural system in uh, industrial park. So uh, we are, by this type of uh, the demonstration program. As you know, Korean uh, labor cost is very, very expensive. So even the Western country, we are more expensive. But uh, our resource and energy efficiency is very, very high through this uh, industry innovation. So when, uh, in 2000, there was a story that uh, maybe when the China started the petrochemical and uh, chemical uh, industrial uh, uh, supporting, then 
uh, maybe Ulsan petrochemical will lose their competitiveness. But it's not true. We are still, we are customizing our uh, petrochemical industry is still have uh, the strong competitiveness using this industrial, uh, eco-industrial park concept. So now we are the, maybe the mobilizing all uh, different type of national uh, the, the, the programs into the eco-industrial uh, development program. So the, we can find uh, some synergy and then we are using the, the very different uh, ministry, uh, Ministry of Construction, Ministry of Science and Technology, and Ministry of Environment, uh, Ministry of Industry working together to innovate mm -hmm. the industrial infrastructure to be more sustainable and to be uh, uh, well uh, managed by the, the community. It can be a uh, uh, the, the economic uh, infrastructure for the uh, sustainable development of the region. So that's why uh, the Korean government will continuously pushing forward this uh, eco-innovation uh, activity in industrial park. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope that in 40 years from now, we can share many more success stories like the Korean story in a similar event. Nayun, to help us to get there, what can the World Bank do? Can you please share with us why the World Bank Group has decided to support the eco-industrial park concept, how the World Bank Group is supporting client countries to overcome? We know there are many barriers. We've heard Korea has managed to overcome these barriers, but we know there are real barriers that exist in all our partner countries, so how can the World Bank Group exist, uh, assist these countries to overcome the barriers that exist in designing new eco-industrial parks or to facilitate the transition from an industrial park towards an eco-industrial park? Yes, uh, first of all, the World Bank uh, supported the eco-industrial park concept because it, it's economically viable and profitable. Uh, it allows for collective benefits at, at a relatively low cost for individual companies otherwise uh, that otherwise individual companies would not have access to. So for example, a common effluent treatment plant or inter-form uh, steam network um, are only like viable when there are um, water intensive and energy intensive companies and there are a lot of companies that uses those facilities and services. Because uh, they, uh, with this uh, common infrastructure, they, the companies can lower the utility bills, water bills, because they share the services and uh, facilities. Uh, so for example, uh, in our Turkey's uh, project, uh, we assess the four um, organized industrial zones, and there uh, our assessment shows that the, uh, the eco-industrial park solutions that we have identified help uh, um, save the utilities cost around $95 million and generate also um, 30, $350 million uh, dollars uh, uh, worth of investment uh, and at the payback period is around 3.7 years. So it's quite economically viable. Um, and uh, we believe that zone management or the industrial park management uh, can provide the opportunities for hundreds and companies, resident companies within the industrial park to create this kind of synergistic effect among the farms uh, um, through this uh, very effective use of the facilities, common infrastructure, green infrastructure, and industrial symbiosis projects. Um, that these kinds of um, facilities that do not exist outside the industrial park and industrial zone. And we also support the eco-industrial park concept because it helps address, uh, it helps uh, our cl client countries address um, many uh, development priorities that these countries have and also the sustainable development goals and the global environmental agenda and climate change agenda. So, so let me give you an example from our um, <laughs> previous project. 
uh, in, in Bangladesh, when we first started to develop this low carbon zone project with Bangladesh Export Processing Zone Authority, at the time, uh, um, global climate change agenda was emerging, and the consensus was that developing countries would be required to participate in the fight against the um, climate change and to require to mitigate uh, carbon footprints of their industry sectors. However, for these countries, um, they have to grow economically through by building facilities, um, industrial parks, ports, power plants, many other um, infrastructures. Uh, and so none of these kind of uh, agenda could be sacrificed. Uh, and at the time, we had a special zone, a economic zone program. However, we did not um, had a chance to address these uh, global environmental and climate change agenda within our special zone, economic zone program. And we um, researched um, many uh, eco-industrial park examples and have found that they have really produced a, a, um, profitability and generate revenues and also improve the energy and uh, resource efficiency. So we try to integrate this concept into our special economic zone program and now we are here uh, after, after 10 years, uh, nine or 10 years. Um, in terms of addressing the many barriers, so as I uh, briefly mentioned in my uh, par uh, presentation, there are, for example, regulatory barriers, institutional barriers that arise from very complex relationship among the line ministries that own their own regulations, waste management or industry policies, many related regulations, and also political barriers even that arise from dynamic political changes and electoral results, and also the financial barriers such as um, and, uh, the public or private stakeholders might see that, um, that, that there is a risk because um, they have low return on investment uh, in the, um, the sustainable and resilient infrastructures, for example. So um, we uh, try to address these kinds of barriers through our in-depth um, technical assessment during the diagnostic stage that I showed on the diagram in the slide be before, and also by engaging a lot of stakeholders and our clients through that process. So let me give you an example about how we address the regulatory barriers. The types of regulatory barriers include, for example, first, lack of appropriate regulations that promote eco-industrial parks, or second, uh, the, the existing regulations that uh, impede the implementation of eco-industrial parks. So um, we do the technical assessment of the regulatory, kind of regulatory gap analys analysis, we call it, and we, uh, for example, in, in our, going back to our Bangladesh case, we have identified that co-generation of power and steam would be a very useful solution for the Chittagong export processing zone. However, at the time, there was no regulation that allowed for the commercial transaction between the steam and um, power, um, uh, and uh, commercial transaction between the two companies regarding the selling and buying of the, uh, the steam and power. So our technical assessment informed uh, our client at the time, Bangladesh Export Processing Zone Authority, uh, and, and they approached the National Regulatory, uh, Energy Regulatory Commission and the Ministry of Power to see if the, uh, they can help develop the policies and regulatory framework that allow for uh, industrial uh, co-generation or uh, industrial um, heat recovery system to scale up at the national level. So uh, our uh, technical assessment and engagement with the stakeholders in that way helped really um, address those barriers. Also the financial barriers, uh, we helped analyze, for example, the IRR and uh, the return, average return uh, uh, payback period and also the energy and uh, water related savings and CAPEX 
So we include all these financial terms when we assess the different uh, eco-industrial park related solutions. Uh, so from early stage, we tend to uh, try to address the financial barriers in this way. And also we identify various financing uh, uh, schemes, including the physical incentives that are existing, already existing in the country. Uh, but also uh, we suggest, for example, a PPP model public-private uh, partnership model, uh, so that the risks uh, um, of investing in this kind of infrastructures can be shared among the public-private sectors. Well, thank you very much. We are already a bit over time, but I still have two questions which I would like to address coming from the audience. One question closely linked to what we've just heard from our colleague from the World Bank. It goes to Peru. To choose an industrial location, it is important to know the energy costs. As explained in the previous panel, the case of, of Chile, in which, in which it was said that this would be a high percentage of the competitive advantage. Has the Peruvian government this information for the case of the Ancon Industrial Park or for other areas where this is going to happen? Gracias, gracias por la pregunta. Antes de contestar esto, quería contestar algo que no había contestado de la, de, de la pregunta de tu pregunta anterior, Cristian, vinculado al tema de qué es lo que se necesita y cuál, qué tipos de apoyo. Ejemplos, 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 ejemplos de cosas que han funcionado, como los que ha presentado el colega de Corea, como lo que nos han presentado la colega de, del Banco Mundial. O sea, cómo, dónde están los modelos de cosas que han funcionado, de cosas que no han funcionado también, de esos, de esos también se aprenden. Creo que eso es, eso es lo más importante, incluso más que el financiamiento. El financiamiento siempre es importante, siempre es importante tener recursos y tener financistas involucrados, pero eso creo que en términos relativos ha ido perdiendo su, su, su trascendencia, su importancia capital. ¿no? O sea, creo que el tema tiene que ver más con la habilidad y la posibilidad de, de hacer bancables los proyectos. ¿Cómo hago bancable el proyecto de parque industrial? y cómo hago bancable el paquete completo del parque industrial con el desarrollo eh, urbano o el desarrollo integral al re, alrededor. Eh, sobre el tema este específico del, del, del costo de, de, de energía para esta zona, no, ten, no tengo el dato, o sea, eso, eso habría que consultárselo al equipo del Ministerio de la Producción, que está viendo el diseño específico del, del, del parque de Ancón y trabajando en los parques industriales, tendería a entender que no es, en el caso específico de Ancón no, no, no sería o no habría una gran diferencia con respecto a otras zonas eh, ya, ya, ya existentes, ¿no? o sea, los, en términos de costo de energía. Creo que en el, en el caso específico de Ancón el factor limitante principal es la disponibilidad de agua. O sea, ahí sí, sí, sí el, tema, el tema es mucho más crítico. Estamos en una zona eh, árida o incluso hiperárida, este, en, en la cual no hay una, una fuente de agua muy cercana, sí podría haber alguna, algún consumo relativamente importante de energía vinculado a la desalinización, por ejemplo, para utilizar, para utilizar agua de mar en los procesos industriales. En el caso de los proyectos específicos que el Ministerio del Ambiente impulsaría alrededor del, pro, del proceso de Ancón, hay todo el tema del bombeo de, de agua de la zona baja hacia, hacia las zonas que tendrían que, re, que tener reforestación, ahí podría haber también algún, algún costo asociado. La, la, la idea o la alternativa que querríamos nosotros sería ver qué posibilidad hay de hacerlo utilizando energías renovables ¿no? para hacer este proceso de bombeo. Pero, como les digo, o sea, este, este detalle más, más, más concreto sobre el costo no, no, no lo manejamos nosotros, ¿no? lo, lo maneja más el, el Ministerio de la Producción que está a cargo del proyecto de, del parque industrial. Gracias. Thank you very much for the, for the answer. And we have one, one last question. This is a general question, and I would leave it to either Nayun or to, to Professor Park to answer it. The question is, what are the main standards that an industrial park must meet to be called an eco-industrial park? And a very interesting aspect is, who is the regulator? Is there some institution which issues like a certificate that this is now an eco-industrial park? Who would like to pick the question? Or maybe both of you can give a short answer to this question. Um, in terms of certification, uh, 
it's very difficult uh, at the country level to really uh, certify. So we are uh, actually also we are trying to develop this certification system, Eco Industrial Park certification system, based on the international framework, where it's still in progress. Uh, and uh, we haven't, I don't know about uh, Korea's case, but we haven't really um, come across with a country that have this kind of regulatory agency that certifies the EIP. China, oh yes, thank you. I think that the uh, government can have a minimum uh, standard or uh, regulatory framework for protecting the environment or resource but the, uh, the collaboration uh, between the company uh, is uh, uh, accelerated by the, the voluntary activities. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I mentioned before that uh, our uh, EIP program started from the uh, Carnival cases. Uh, it's kind of uh, B2B businesses. So, we also uh, maybe experience this can be possible in Korea. So in Korean uh, government, they are uh, finishing the national program and uh, privatize this program. So my center is the first uh, nationally uh, approved uh, consulting company. So this uh, uh, continue this project. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this, uh, the, the eco-industrial park or industrial symbiosis business is a new resource uh, venture businesses. During my uh, project, we are incubating seven to eight companies from two person to 30 pupils. So they are very high advanced specific uh, technology they have. They have uh, finding a niche places where the company uh, needs. They are from the waste, they are looking into the waste stream and uh, find the molecular value and uh, the, the, the maybe using the technology, they uh, make a new value and then sharing uh, together and attracting the investment. So now we are continuously attracting investment and also uh, creating value. So, and job creation. So this is kind of, uh, so that's why my dream is that, okay, when we are talking about the venture businesses, most of the venture businesses based on the IT or uh, the, the, what can I say, uh, advanced technology. But I think that uh, uh, industrial symbiosis resource business is based on the trust. So it's kind of the, uh, molecular value and but the important thing is that how we can uh, maybe gather the uh, uh, exact information from the company. The company are very reluctant even the uh, government can't force them to disclose their uh, environmental information and the technology information. So that's why actually I think that uh, the company voluntarily participate by showing them the success story. So my first project was uh, uh, the government forced me to make a 10 demonstration program. So I reject, I can't do that. I will make a only one success story. So, so my uh, argument was more impact. Mm -hmm. So my mayor, uh, the I used that uh, maybe municipal solid waste incinerator to have uh, some uh, steam networking. By this steam networking, uh, we can uh, attract two uh, new businesses and uh, the benefit, uh, the, this uh, industrial symbiosis businesses benefit uh, for the city almost, uh, what can I say, it's 50, 50 million US dollars during the last 10 years. So that's why I think that uh, the mayor very strongly supported uh, our uh, what can I say, activities. And this can also impact to central government to, uh, what can I say, go further 
on this businesses. But right now, we already uh, have the idea and the, the experience. So uh, the government are not want to continue this uh, the pilot project. Okay, this is totally depend on the market systems. This is what uh, we are doing right now. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I think this was a very good answer. It sheds light on, on the question. And once more, I think it also shows us the importance if you look at the 2030 agenda and beyond 2030. The latest data was 414 ppm of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. To achieve climate change targets, which mm -hmm. should be restricted to plus two degrees, mm -hmm. we would have to stay below 400. Mm -hmm. So we have overshot. Mm -hmm. I think this also demonstrates how important it is. We need economic development. We need prosperity, we need jobs, we need tax revenues, but we need to decouple this development mm -hmm. from natural resource consumption, mm -hmm. from pollution, from destruction of mm -hmm. our environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much to the audience. I know it's late, you had a long day, and I would like you to give our three panelists, our four panelists, a big hand so loud that even Martin can hear you. Y agradecemos muy especialmente también a nuestro moderador, por favor, un aplauso para él. Mr. Susan, please welcome to the center of the stage. Everybody, please, for a photograph. Y en estos momentos, Prom Perú le hace entrega de un presente simbólico a modo de agradecimiento por su participación en este tan importante panel sobre parques ecoindustriales. Agradecemos nuevamente la presencia de Mrs. Yun Xin, Mr. Sakwark, Mr. Peter, el señor Quijandría, nuestro viceministro de Desarrollo de Recursos Naturales y Mr. Susan. A todos ellos, muchas gracias por haber participado en este tan importante panel. Vamos a invitar nuevamente a Mrs. Neil Jim Tash, subdirectora del Departamento de Ambiente de ONUDI, quien nos dirigirá unas palabras finales. La recibimos con un cálido aplauso. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like, we started the uh, discussions this morning rather early. Uh, we have, I heard many leaders from both the government and the business sector make contributions. We heard the specialists, the academicians, practitioners, a long day, but I hope uh, we all learned from each other. Very interesting case examples were presented. So I wish all of you, uh, I thank you uh, for, for persisting and staying with us all day. And uh, I wish you a wonderful evening and look forward to have you with us again for tomorrow's deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you sincerely. I have to, I'm so sorry. I have to also thank the, our interpreters, the technical team, the organizers for facilitating us to communicate in this very international gathering. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Tash. Damas y caballeros, eh, ahora sí, tal como lo anunció, hemos finalizado la primera jornada de esta conferencia internacional Parques Industriales para el Desarrollo Industrial Inclusivo y Sostenible. Esperando que hayan disfrutado de esta larga...